Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to our Platform Shooter Part 13, I believe. We're on Part 13 now. In this video, I'm going to be changing the Move and Collide function, or script, I should say, a little bit so that we can allow for a bounce with it. And we're going to be simplifying the enemy artificial intelligence. I originally showed you the older system to introduce states to you, but for this enemy, we actually don't really need it. So we're going to simplify the enemy down further. Let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your move script. And we're going to be adjusting this just a little bit in order to make it work with a bounce argument as well. And the way we can do this is we'll add var bounce equals argument one. So we'll pass in another argument for bounce. Make sure we list the parameter up here. Then instead of just setting the speed equal to zero like this, we're going to first check our bounce. If bounce is greater than zero, else speed equals zero. Okay, so we'll set the speed to zero if there's no bounce, but if there is a bounce, what do we want to do? Well, we want to set the speed, horizontal speed, equal to negative speed times bounce. So whatever our bounce value is, let's say our bounce value is 0.5 and we're, let's say our speed is 4, we'll be moving to the right with a speed of 4 when we hit a wall. We're going to um, reverse that speed by making a negative 4 and then we're going to multiply it by our bounce which would be 0.5 so then we'll have negative 2 will be our horizontal speed. So we'll start moving to the left with the speed of two. So you can see if we set our bounce value to one, then the bounce won't lose any momentum when it hits the wall. And that allows us to choose. Now we're gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna actually copy and paste this. Control C, Control V, and then just change these to vertical speed instead of horizontal speed. And everything else should work the same. Okay, so we set up our bounce argument, but now we need to find all the places where we're calling move again. So we're gonna, I'm going to do control shift F and type in move. And this should give us all the places. Actually, I want to make sure this is case sensitive and whole word only. So find all. And there we go. Now, inside of our enemy, we've got move here. Let's set our bounce to 1 inside of our enemy here. We'll set our bounce to one as well. We're gonna change this later anyways. Inside of here, we'll set our bounce to one. Inside of the player, we'll set our bounce to zero. We don't want to, we don't want to bounce at all with the player. It, also, it wouldn't really work. You'd, you'd see it would, we'd no longer be able to land on the ground. So, in theory. Now we can close out of our move script and we need to simplify the enemies and there's a lot that goes into simplifying the enemy. If we come into the create event we're going to first need to create a few new variables here because we have our speed and our speed push. Well we actually don't need our speed push anymore. We're going to be using the same speed for everything but we do need an acceleration. So we're going to create an acceleration and I'm going to set it equal to 0 0.05 and that's just a value that I found that works pretty well. Our max speed is 1. I'm going to set our max speed to 2 now. For our movement we don't need these other states now. Uh, we'll just have the movement state. Then we can come into our attack state and you can see we have our enemy fire bullet right here. We're just going to copy this 
come into our movement state and instead of changing to the attack state see how this distance right here we change the attack state instead of changing to the attack state we're just gonna fire the bullets so we'll, we'll fire while we're moving and you'll see that this works because of the low acceleration that we're gonna give the player now we also need to change how we move the player so we don't need our push force anymore so we can remove this right here but we still need to move towards the player so we're gonna have our direction and then we're going to get instead of instead of setting our speeds equal every single frame we're gonna add to our speed every single frame so we'll say plus equals and then we're going to set instead of max speed here we're gonna use acceleration because we're adding to our speed every frame so we want to accelerate but now we're gonna have an infinite um, max speed because we're not clamping our speed anymore so what we'll want to do here is we'll want to say if point distance zero zero speed h speed y or v I mean is greater than max speed so we have we we converted our speed into um, right here into a direction and an acceleration amount that we're going to be adding every basically into a vector but um, we've got a direction acceleration well we can use point distance to find out this is basically point distance basically uses the Pythagorean theorem in order to find out the distance between these two points and that will give us the current speed that we're actually moving in that direction uh, so once we have that and we know that it's greater than the max speed then we we need to set it equal to the max speed so then we say speed and you can actually copy these right here but we need to get our because this is the direction that we want to move in right here Dur right here because we want to move towards the player but when we're clamping our speed we need to get the direction we're actually moving in because they're going to be different directions because we're accelerating towards the player we may not exactly be heading in the same direction all the time because we're gonna it's gonna give us like a steering behavior where we'll slowly turn towards the player so we need to get the direction that we're actually moving so we'll say var move dir equals point direction and then it's gonna have the same arguments that we passed right here because this is the direction we're actually moving which is zero zero speed h speed v and then we want to use move direction as the direction that we move in we want to use max speed instead of acceleration because we're clamping to our max speed we're saying if we're moving faster then set it to the max speed and then we also don't want to do plus equals anymore because that's not what we want we want to just set it now because we're setting to the max speed once we've done all of this we should be able to remove the move and put it in the very outside so that we continue moving no matter no matter what's happening with our current state and now instead of instead of setting the hit state uh, when we get hit by a bullet um, we're gonna just set our speed instead of speed push now so we get to simplify this down we get to remove changing states and everything else should be good okay then we can remove the hit state as well so delete event and delete the attack state delete event 
Now, I think our enemies should work now. Let's test it. And you can see they move pretty fast. And you can see they kind of like turn towards us. And they'll also bounce off the walls. Which allows for basic pathing. <laughs> it, it's kind of cheating um, pathfinding. Oh, we've got a we've got a speed push somewhere still. It shows it's in our enemy step event inside of the collision. The enemy collision with what though? Oh, with the other enemies. Duh. Okay, so come into the other enemy. Instead of having this as speed push, we'll just set this to speed. Here we go. So it is cheating a little bit to just have them bounce off walls in order to be able to find you. But, and I'm dead. And then they're just going to kind of bounce around. But it's actually better than, like, it's a simple solution that works well for this type of game that we're doing. This game works fine with the bouncing solution, and so that's what I decided to go with because it makes things a lot easier. You can get a lot more complicated with your pathfinding solutions, um, but for this game, I really felt like this was a good, good solution. Very simple. I'm going to get past this wave if I have to. See, even when they get stuck outside the walls on the top, they can still manage to make it back sometimes. Because they bounce enough. And changing the bounce amount, um, which by the way, it'd be really funny to set the bounce amount to something like way higher. But anyways, changing the bounce amount is what's going to affect basically how easy it is for them to go around corners. That's why I chose a bounce amount of one because then it's pretty it's pretty easy for them to go around corners. And it's nice to have only the one speed and not have the push speed anymore that we don't really need for this enemy type. Now for if you have an enemy type with more states like a boss that switches between different states, that's why I originally introduced the states system to you anyways is because it's really useful for bosses. You know, if the boss gets down to below 50% then its behaviors change and it starts using different states. That's when a state system is really useful but for this enemy it wasn't quite as useful so I decided to simplify it down and that that would make it better that would make the artificial intelligence seem a little bit better anyways uh, better for this type of game which is kind of like a, a bullet hell type game. We've just got a lot of bullets going everywhere so hopefully you guys found this video useful. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll have more next week. And I will talk to you guys later.